welcome to part four and the instruction videos on how to uh, build the CT3DT slash C cantilever printer as seen uh, on Instructables with the link underneath the video in the description so you can find it there. In this video we will be wiring up the inductive sensor. So in the previous video I wired up every component to the KV 2.0 board. I held off on the induction sensor because we actually have to do some soldering and adding resistors to make this work properly. This is the uh, PMP proximity sensor by Axel I believe on Amazon and there will be a link either below or in the instructable and they will recognize metal. Now these are originally developed for recognizing what it says on the website iron or steel so when it says a four millimeter detection that applies to uh, steel or iron not to aluminum so it will detect aluminum but it will probably do that closer at like maybe two millimeters not four millimeters this will most likely not work or actually from what I've seen in the past this will not work through a glass plate so even if you have one of those uh, aluminum uh, heated beds under a glass plate it, the detection will not uh, actually detect the metal so be careful with that you really have to go directly against an aluminum bed and there can be blue tape on there or uh, Biltec or PEI sheets but uh, once you get too far or too thick away from the metal it will not detect this the wiring will go in through a second it's not very traditional the way they've wired this thing there's three wires and there's basically voltage in and the ground wire and then a signal out now normally black would be ground but in this case what we're looking at is we have a brown wire blue wire and a black wire the brown wire is the voltage in and the voltage in can be 6 to 36 volts blue is the ground wire and black is the actual signal wires black here the signal not ground so keep that in mind we will be connecting this to the KFB board and we will be using the 2 to 24 volt output. The 2 to 24 volt output will go through the sensor and I will illustrate this in a second. And then it actually puts out 12 volts through the signal wire. And when metal approaches, the voltage drops to zero. That works great, but we uh, we will be hooking up to one of the Z-Max sensor, or the Z-Min sensor, I'm sorry. And the Z-min sensor cannot take in 12 volts. What we have to do is we have to reduce the voltage coming out of the inductive sensor down to a range of voltage that the KB board can handle with. And we will be doing this by adding some resistors and bringing down the voltage coming out of this sensor from 12 volt to around 3 volt. And so what will happen then is when metal approaches the sensor, it will drop from 3 volt to 0 volt. So that's what we'll be going through in this video. First, I want to kind of illustrate just how the sensor works. And uh, we don't need the board for that. What we can do is I have my 12 volt input to the printer set up. I've temporarily hooked up to one of these little bridges and we'll just wire up the, uh, the, the inductive sensor itself. So uh, brown is a positive. So we're going to put brown on the 12 volt output. Blue is ground. We will put this on the ground coming from the... and then we have the signal wire which I'm going to put in right now here. Okay so at this point we have a working adductor sensor. If I now turn on the power there will be 12 volts going in and let me illustrate this by bringing this so let me see if I can get the camera to pick up on this come on you can do it okay so and if I approach with metal the sensor comes on now if you look at the output of the sensor and I'm gonna turn my voltage meter on and I'll turn it towards you Okay, so we have voltage 
coming out. So let's just show from the PSU we're getting 12 volts. Let me orient this a little better here so you can actually read it. 12 volts. And if we read the output from the sensor, which would be ground to the output, you see we're getting 12 volt as well. Now, if I hold this in place, I'm going to put the sensor here. So 12 volts coming out of the sensor right now. And if I approach this with a screwdriver, it drops to zero volt. Well, in this case, 2.5 volt, but it, there's basically a major drop in voltage. And that's what the board reads. So when you approach it with metal, it drops in voltage. But again, the KFB board cannot handle the 12 volt signal. So that's what we have to bring down. The most common wiring, if you, you know, Google this, you'll find is to use a, you do a voltage splitting where you actually take two resistors, a 15K and a 10K resistor, and you wire those to split the voltage going to the actual Z min output. And I will put the graphic up uh, right down here so you can follow along with what's happening with the resistors. Uh, so I have two resistors. I bought these at the local surplus store. And unfortunately, I'm colorblind, so I'm not going to try to read the color signals. But we have the kilo ohms. Here we go. So we have this one is 15 kilo ohms. The brown one is 15 kilo ohms, and the green one here is 10 kilo ohms. We have the signal wire coming out of the sensor hooked up directly to a 15k resistor. I'm going to turn the power off for a second here. So the 15k resistor, which is the brown one, uh, we're going to bridge from here to here. And that will go directly to the signal. So let's assume that this, this one here will be a signal and this will be the ground on the actual KFB board. So we have the signal and the ground. The outward one is signal, the middle one is the ground. Then we have from there, we're splitting power off with a 10K going from the wire directly to, and we will be soldering this up in a little wiring harness later on. If we turn this on, the um, after the wire splitting, we have the ground here. That will be the ground on the Z-min. And we have the signal. And this is now dropped from 12 volt to 3 volt. And if we approach metal, it drops to 0 volt. Now we have the output ground and signal that is safe to put into the board itself. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're actually going to wire up a little wiring harness to connect to the 12 volt output here and then have the wires come back from the sensor and go to the Z min and then we will test out if the sensor works through the Pronterface software just like we did in the previous video when we wired up the KFB 2.0 board. The KFB board, and I'm trying not to screw up this time, plus on plus. And negative on negative. Okay, so I've kind of laid out the pattern of how I am going to be soldering this together. So we have the signal wire coming from the sensor. We have the 15K ohm resistor. That splits off into the signal wire to the board, which will be going into the Z-min. And it will split off into a 10K resistor that subsequently goes to the ground and again to the Z-min. 
This is what we will, will we will be soldering first, and then I'll put some crimping plastic around it so you really won't see what goes on inside, but it'll all be nicely covered up. All right, so we have clean hook up here. Then we're going to add the three prong JST connector on this end, and we will be going into the Z minus here, which means that the outer two, the middle one, will be ground, and the most outer one away from the processor will be the signal. You can verify this signal ground voltage. So it's going to be connected like this. Now I'm going to take the case out for a second because we have to kind of figure out the wiring length coming out. So this is how the board will sit in and the cables will be coming through here. So we will be clearly there's plenty of room for this one here. And then we need the 12 voltage wires going over here. Okay, we will be wiring ground and plus from the fan. We're basically going to put a JST connector on there and then we will be routing it next to the signal wire and then outside of the box we will be able to connect it to the actual sensor. Okay, and if we look at the board 12 volt ground away from the processor, power towards the processor. Or in this case, our 12 volt coming out. So that's how this would look. And then what we can do is we can kind of wire these, make these come together. The reason I'm taking this outside of the box is because um, all these wires are going to be in a braided sleeve and so this wire from the sensor is way thicker than the D3 individual wires so that's why I kind of want to keep this coming out of the box as opposed to this having to go into the controller box. That's that. What I am going to do now is um, we're going to connect this to the actual inductive sensor. Okay, now I've kind of messed with the color, right? So we have blue ground, that's the same as the inductor. We have red, which is a 12 volt, which will correspond to the brown wire. And we have the yellow signal wire, which will correspond with the signal, the black signal wire. Okay, so now we have it all wired up. I am going to remove the Zeman temporarily from the board because I'm going to test this out and I do not want to blow up my board by sending through the wrong power. All right, so I'm going to turn. All right, so we have 12 volt coming into the board. And let's check on the sensor if it is detecting metal. So the sensor is getting the proper voltage, as you can see. And now we'll test the output. I am going to connect ground temporarily to ground.
there we have it, 3.35 volts. So that's good. Now let's see if I can get these, keep these in place. Get some metal nearby. And that drops to zero. So that's excellent, exactly what we need. Okay, so we can, I'm going to turn the power off. And we're going to plug this in. So now we have the wiring harness for the inductive sensor done. And I'm going to connect to the computer. All right. I'm going to turn power on because this does need 12 volt to actually operate. And at this point, I can send M119, M19. And it shows X, Y, and Z open. I am going to now put a piece of metal next to the inductive sensor. And I see the light come on. So let's, let me just do it like this. Okay, so you can see the light is on. I'm going to send and 119 again and it is triggered so now we have the working inductive sensor okay so that's the wiring of the inductive sensor to the KB board although this principle will actually apply to any type of RAMS board or any board that puts out 12 volt and needs to have less voltage coming into the inductive sensor if you like what you see Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, if you really want to help me out, go to Patreon and support me there. This stuff costs money, I'm not making any, so anything helps. Thank you and goodbye.